Hi, I'm Bruce Naylor, your Frugal Tech, and um, thank you for joining us for this episode of the Frugal Technology Show. Um, We're going to be talking a little bit about Linux today. There's a lot of of changes in the way that XP is now being licensed and what's coming on new machines, and if you're not aware of what's happening is, is that Microsoft is uh, allowing you to downgrade to XP on new machines, but you got to purchase a Vista license to do it with. So it's kind of an expensive way to do it. What if your IT dollars are just kind of short? Is there an alternative? And I've got to tell you, Linux can be a valuable, uh, a valuable and viable alternative to uh, uh, Vista on new machines. Now, the first thing you should understand is that Linux comes in different distributions. We call them distros for short, but it's basically a different dialect. Of, there's different dialects of the, uh, Linux out there, but some of the most popular uh, distributions, and certainly I think the most popular right now, it might could give some debate on it or not, but is a distribution called Ubuntu. And Ubuntu um, is from a company called Canical. It is absolutely free. There is no license fee. That's like 300 bucks. If you're looking at a uh, Vista business license right now, that's $300. With Ubuntu, uh, uh, the desktop edition, uh, it's absolutely free. There is no licensing fee. And that's really, really cool that you can do that. And I've used Ubuntu for a, uh, a long time. Uh, we use the server version of it here when my engineers is using it as a desktop replacement for XP. And he's running a little bit older hardware and it's doing great. He's getting really great performance out of it. Our uh, Ubuntu server uh, runs day in and day out without complaint. We really don't have to do anything to it. And we didn't pay a dime for that server operating system. Now, Windows Server 2008 starts out at around $1,000 for the basic operating system. So we saved $1,000 right up front on the server. Now, it's really going to depend on what you use the server for and uh, the type of line of business applications you run. But we want to talk a little bit about Linux and and some of the things you can do. So the the distro or the distribution of Linux is important. But also the desktop manager, that is the user interface of Linux. There's basically two. KDE is one, and uh, I believe it's, I'm not sure if it's pronounced Genome or Gnome or Gnome, but it's G-N-O-M-E, two different desktops. And I think with Ubuntu, it uh, out of the gate installs the uh, genome uh, desktop. So that's just the way the, the windows do, but you can change. You can have one if you don't like it, you can install the other. Um, now, Linux is licensed under what's called the general public license. So uh, there are commercial versions that you can buy, but there's, uh, there's many, many free ones, and Ubuntu happens to be one of the free ones. And when you install Linux on a machine, they really do a nice job today of detecting your hardware, setting themselves up, and joining the network very, very nicely, very, very easily. And it's really cool how well they work. And they also come with a lot of productivity applications right into the operating system. And you can basically download, an I, for example, an ISO image of Linux, say of Ubuntu, burn it to a DVD CD, and install it on the machine and off you go. And one of the things that it comes with is a product called OpenOffice. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit more depth here in a minute, but OpenOffice is a replacement for Microsoft Office. It's the Linux version of Office, absolutely free to use, um, and I think uh, it's pretty much feature functionally uh, equivalent of the Microsoft Office Professional Edition, which is around, what, $500 or more. Uh, so you, it comes with that. It comes with web browser. Firefox comes with it. But it also will install uh, Apache, which is a personal web or a web, a web server application. Um, may install MySQL, which is a database applica- or a, a database uh, system that gets installed in, uh, in a Linux installation. Um, there's um, uh, there's a virtual virtualization software now that comes with it, uh, so you could actually run, uh, you could actually 
if you want to install another OS in a virtual machine, you can run VMware uh, server as well on a, uh, on a, for example, on an Ubuntu uh, system. So all that's there. Uh, there's a uh, KVM, which is a, uh, a, uh, a kernel-based or a, uh, a, a version of the uh, virtualization software as well. So you can use either KVM or you could use um, uh, VMware as well. And also, if you do have some Windows applications you want to try running and, and not using a virtual machine or dual boot, there's also a Linux utility called Wine, and that allows some, like, some older versions of Outlook and Office and things to run without running a, uh, <clears throat> without running a virtual machine, and, and supposedly it does it at native speed. Now, I've never seen that, but that's my understanding of, of uh, what you can do there. The networking that comes is called Samba, and Samba, uh, in my opinion, is not very difficult to set up and configure, though there's times you might have a few tricky things here and there, but other than that, I mean, it basically, uh, I don't think it's any more difficult to set up a Samba network than it is a uh, Windows XP network. Um, what about things like Exchange? Well, there's a free collaboration tool that actually can replace Exchange, and it's called Zimbra Collaboration Suite, uh, which you can use to replace Exchange with. There's a Outlook, uh, I won't say the word clone, but it basically does the same thing as Outlook for Linux, and it's called Evolution. And Evolution, um, there's a connector you can get that if you are running an exchange shop, you can uh, connect right to your exchange. And it basically does all the same things uh, that Outlook does. Um, we're talking saving, you know, $300 or more just on the, uh, uh, the Windows license, not having to deal with that. $500 more uh, on the... Uh, uh, on Office, the Open Office productivity suites there. There's lots of free utilities and software and open source uh, software on Linux. Um, you, so you can have a very viable alternative to a Windows PC running these, suite, uh, these applications. Uh, and it may be all you need for your shop to be using Linux and you're saving some serious money right there. So the main thing is is not to get too worked up over the particular distribution of Linux, but uh, let's face it, I mean, a lot of us small businesses were cash-strapped right now with the economy being the way the things they are, and why should we have to pay for a, a copy of Vista Business on a machine in order to get XP? It's kind of an expensive way of going about it. So if here's Linux out there, and I think a lot of people's got in their mind that Linux is a little too difficult <laughs> Uh, to use or a little too uh, to, to learn, and it's, they've really made tremendous leap and bounds uh, with Linux. It's it's uh, I got to tell you, it's really a viable alternative to XP Professional or Vista Business. It's true there are some uh, major uh, uh, applications that don't are they're not ported to. Uh, uh, Linux, such as Photoshop, is one. But there's a Linux alternative. In other words, if it's not out there, there's an alternative to it in the Linux world that will probably be pretty well feature compatible uh, or comparable with the Linux application. So you want to keep that in mind. Linux is a, uh, I think, also makes better use of hardware than uh, XP as well. Um, I think you can take even older hardware and get extra life out of it running a Linux installation. It's just faster and it multitasks, I think, more smoothly than XP and it makes takes advantage of the hardware a lot better. So on older machines that you might think might be at end of life, heck no, you can go ahead and uh, get those machines fired up and get them going again and put a copy of Linux on it. Use it as a workstation if you're using it for email, uh, maybe creating work, you know, documents, that sort of thing. Why not go ahead and put Linux on it? It doesn't cost you anything, and then off you go.